You know, usually when we talk about the war on finance, our guest, Rob Breckenridge from Calgary, but Charles Cook joins us today. You might remember him when we talked about the Occupy Wall Street movement. Due to massive demand for my female viewership, Charles Cook is on to talk about many other subjects. Charles, you're talking to me today about Mayor Bloomberg, Nurse Bloomberg's war against sugary drinks. What's going on down there in the Big Apple? Well, it's you, you say the Big Apple. I think that's that's a, a, a good way of putting it. Um, it's all people will probably be allowed to eat uh, by the end of his third term. Um, it, it's strange that this is happening in New York. You know, New York was a big holdout against prohibition. Um, it was there were between a 30,000 and 100,000 uh, speakeasies in 1925, and it was full of sort of dancing girls and you know jazz bands and so on. And now, apparently, you can't buy a 16-ounce soda without breaking the law. Uh, Bloomberg announced recently that as part of the war on sugar and salt and trans fats and anything else people enjoy, uh, it's now going to be illegal within New York to buy um, any sodas above 16 ounces at cinemas and restaurants and anywhere that is a, is a food provider. This is, of course, to uh, combat New York's biggest problem, which is uh, soda. <laughs> well, now, let's say I'm going to the movie theater and I want a 16-ounce drink. Uh, and you're saying I can't get that. Can I order two eight-ounce drinks? Uh, well, this is the thing. You can order two 15-ounce drink, drinks, I think. And, and this is a little, little silly, really. Um, Bloomberg himself came out and made all of the arguments in his press conference that people like me have, which is, he said, he said don't worry about this rule because it will never work. He said, there's nothing to stop you buying two. There's nothing to stop you getting refills. Well, in which case, why pass the law? Huh. And then he also said that that's what the mayor's for. He's to do these sort of things because this is the public wants, uh, what the public wants. But then again, if this were what the public wants, then presumably the public would do it. That's a good point. Now, I see there's some other rules, like 51% milk uh, means that you can have a latte. But if it's 49% milk, you can't have it. And juice has to be at least 70% real, not just 65. Am I getting these numbers right? Are, are, are there going to be cuisine cops or, or sugar security going around testing these percentages? How, how's Mayor Bloomberg going to know? Well, that's a very fair question. Uh, I presume there won't be cops, although uh, if a business, uh, if a cinema, a movie theater or a, or a restaurant wants to stay good with the state, I imagine they'll have to make sure that upon their inspection, um, they're up to code. Look, you know, 49%, 51%, we can haggle over the details. The reality is this is just something the government should not be involved in at all. And it's especially odd, really. It looks as if uh, Bloomberg is, is playing out his pathologies uh, on the people of New York. Because there's a, a strange New York Times article three years ago, and it said, you know, Bloomberg actually doesn't live like he wants others to live. They said he puts so much salt on his popcorn that it actually burns people's tongues if they take a bite. <laughs> he puts salt on pizza. He binge eats, he drinks uh, four coffees a day despite telling people to drink carefully and drink water. You know, this is, this is a man who, who, who's very much uh, do as I say, not as I do. Um, hmm. And uh, I think he may well have jumped the shark on this one. The cab driver on the way over was saying this is, this is one step too far. Now, have, has he announced any penalties or enforcement? I mean, if this is just some dumb stump speech, moral, bully pulpit thing, okay, fine, we can laugh at it. But is there actually a penalty here? Like if, I mean, I know New York, one of the great things about that city is there's so many folks on the street, usually new immigrants trying to work hard to make a living, street carts, you can eat great on the sidewalk in New York. Is he going to have people actually roughing up those street vendors like is there any penalty here charles well actually on the contrary with, with that one it may well be a boon to them because the the regulations currently as they're currently written they say that you, you essentially can't sell you know those normal standard bottles of coke mm -hmm. um they would actually be illegal to sell in most establishments but there's an exemption for for street cars so if i were an immigrant running a street car right now i'd actually probably support this <laughs> Um, of course, that doesn't that doesn't make it right, yeah. but it, it does show you how silly the whole thing is. If you're if you're a, a, a provider of food in any way, you can't sell a bottle of Coke. If you're a street vendor, you can. Why? This is America. Yeah. That's weird. Now, are there any penalties? And and who's going to enforce this? I mean, I would think that the New York Police Department has a few other things on the go, including, for example, the regularly catching terrorist plans in the works. Is there is there a particular <laughs> branch of the bureaucracy that's on the file here? I don't think so. Um, I, I mean, I think I think you hit the nail on the head. I think thus far this is this is posturing. 
Um, as I say, I imagine food inspections would, uh, would, would take a look into it when, when and uh, where they happen. But um, I, I doubt that the New York Police Department is going to be interested in this. And, and again, with my prohibition analogy, they weren't interested in it back then either. New York cops have never, have never played ball with this sort of, uh, this sort of restriction. Uh, last question. I know the mayor's brought in some other bans. You, you mentioned trans fats. You mentioned salt. And I think he also banned smoking inside. Have these bans been enforced, these other bans, in his war on fun? Yes. <laughs> they have yes, been. Yes, absolutely. Eh? He, he has enforced uh, the salt the, ban. How? How yeah, and, uh, well, it's, it's not a ban. It's, it's a restriction on salt. But, uh, I mean, the, the one which is enforced, and I think which is the most in, insidious as well, especially for small business owners, is that he, he forces uh, all food providers to put the calorie count, uh, if they have a certain number of uh, restaurants or employees, to put the calorie count on all menus and these sort of big boards um, and so forth. And I mean, that, that just imposes costs on, on small businesses that, uh, that are really unnecessary. Yeah, plus I can't um, count that as well. myself. Listen, Charles, we're out of time. No, we're, well, it, <laughs> sorry, go ahead. <laughs> Last word to you. No, I was going to say, I can't count that high either, but to be honest, it actually makes me want to have a bath in Mountain Dew just to be defiant. <laughs> You're our kind of guy, Charles Cook, writer with the National Review. Thanks for joining us today from New York.